Before we begin today, Archbishop Haviland will be here on the next Sunday, the third Sunday in Advent, which is December 13th. I also want to remind you that we need your, you to pledge for 2021. If you're a member of St. Benedict's, we need that pledge. Uh, we are very hopeful and very glad for the news that there is a vaccine. People will, certain at-risk people will start to receive it this month. But that means that the coronavirus days are, are numbered. It will be over. This church is going to get back to things being as usual or better. Yes, I think better. And uh, so make that pledge and be ready to come back. For now, if you come, bring your mask, practice social distancing. Uh, you should have the newsletter. It, I just sent it out. This is the second Sunday in Advent. We call it Bible Sunday in our tradition. shalt not make to thyself any graven image to the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them. Lord have mercy and upon us, us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, 
and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. That by patience and comfort of thy holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost now and ever. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the 15th chapter of Blessed Paul the Apostle's Epistle to the Romans, beginning with the fourth verse. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the Lord of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hearing of the epistle. Thanks be to God. Out of Zion hath God appeared in perfect beauty. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me with sacrifice. Alleluia. When they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Alleluia.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning with the 25th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, Know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away, it will all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one, one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Son of God, God begotten of his Father before Jesus. all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you're old enough to remember those little black things that spun around on a turntable, records with record labels in the middle, yeah, and you remember RCA Victor, or it, perhaps you've seen it, look it up, there's these, you know, you can see the image of their advertising campaign of a dog seriously listening to the Victorola, those old, old kind of record players. And the point of the advertising was that the recording quality was so good, the fidelity was so real that the dog recognized its master's voice. 
Yeah, our approach to scripture, if it's going to be in any way useful or edifying, is a matter of hearing. In early centuries, the church heard the voice of God in certain books. There was some series, I think it was on the History Channel, banned from the Bible about books. No, they were never banned from the Bible. They weren't in the Bible. They just, they just, they, they never were in something called the Bible. It did, you know, you had the, the, the Hebrew scriptures. You have what's called the Apocrypha that is called Deuterocanonical. And you had then eventually a process of the, the people of God hearing the voice of God in the New Testament as they had heard it in the ancient Hebrew scriptures. And the fact of the matter is that it's, it's like that dog with the Victorola. <laughs> the church heard the master's voice. They recognized the word of God and it's been passed down. And so we receive it. And the way we receive it in our Anglican heritage is we receive it as being in perfect harmony with the teaching that we have received as well and the doctrine that the church has always taught and defended from earliest times and continues to teach. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers, Acts 2. 42. This is how we do it. This is how we hear what God has revealed to the prophets and the apostles. The word of God, there's many ways you can read it, but ultimately what you need to do is what our collect says, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest the scriptures. That by patience and comfort of thy holy word, may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life in Christ Jesus. So let's be practical. Yes, I, I could talk to you right now in terms of all the, well, a lot of most of the modern scholarship that's out there and have very interesting conversations. Uh, you could uh, take the gospel reading for today and read it incorrectly, which is to say, read it simply to satisfy curiosity about what's called the end times. There's a lot of that kind of Bible reading. That kind of, we're going to study Revelation and Daniel. And I don't recommend it. <laughs> I don't because that's not... People have been spending decades trying to, to, to line the Bible up with uh, the newspapers, and uh, it's a waste of time. Don't, 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 look, don't try to force round hole, holes and square, pe uh, square pegs and round holes. That's a, don't try to force square pegs and round holes by trying to determine so and so, I remember in the 70s, just Henry Kissinger, the Antichrist. That's not the way to read the Bible. Another way it's not to read the Bible, about 20 years ago, there was this thing called the Bible Code where people were, you know, looking at how it made these numerical equations in the, T, in the original Hebrew and Greek, and there were all these hidden meanings. That's not the way to read the Bible either. Moses said, the hidden things belong to the Lord our God. Those things are revealed belong to us and to our children that we may do them. Acts, <clears throat> excuse me, Isaiah 55 is, uh, the entire chapter is the Old Testament lesson for morning prayer today. I'm going to take part of it beginning in verse six. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he'll have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down the snow from heaven, the returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and Bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. 
It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Yeah, and Jesus would say, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Hear in Hebrew is shmai. And shmai really has two basic meanings, to hear and to obey. So when you're told to hear in the Bible, you're also being told to obey. Now, Isaiah here is saying that God's ways, he says, my ways are not your ways, neither are your thoughts. My, uh, your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And people say, that's right. You know, you can't play chess with God and win. And that's true. You can't. But that's not the purpose of the text. The purpose of the text is he's telling you that if you live your life based strictly on your own ways and your own thoughts, that that is wicked and it's unrighteous and you need to return to the Lord. Yeah, his ways are higher than ours as the heavens are above the earth. But what does he say? As the rain and snow come down from heaven, God's word comes down and comes through his mouth. Lord said to Jeremiah, if you separate the precious from the vile, you'll be as my mouth. So God spoke through his mouth, the prophets, and, and through the apostles. And the idea is your ways and thoughts. What are ways? Ways, that's how you live. That's what you do. And your thoughts are how you, how you justify what you do or determine what you're going to do. Well, one of the things I love about the affirmation of St. Louis, when it talks about the Bible, it doesn't tell us it's a book of a million rules you better learn. And no, it says you need to form your conscience based on the word of God. You have to have a conscience that is so well informed, you know what God is commanding. And to a large degree, you know that. So what are unrighteous thoughts? Well, I'll give you an example. Because I tell you right now, I've talked a lot about the Sermon on the Mount this year. I think the greatest example of unrighteous thoughts will occur to you while you're reading the Sermon on the Mount. And the problem is, they're going to be your own thoughts. It's not fair. Sort of like that Alfred Hitchcock movie where the body is in the apartment and the director fools you into being... a at times sympathetic with the murderers because you start to get afraid they're going to find the body and you realize, oh my goodness, what's wrong with me? And it, the director has, has been very clever. Well, you know, you read the Sermon on the Mount, you're going to unfortunately learn about yourself. Jesus is going to say, turn the other cheek. And you're, <laughs> you already know how you react when you fired that the first time. You already know how you react even now. It's called rationalization. Give to everyone that asks of you. Is Jesus stark raving, man? What's he talking about? And you start to rationalize. He can't mean it. He can't really mean Forgive? If I don't forgive people, God doesn't forgive me. What, I can't even get mad and chew somebody out and cuss them? And, and... No, you can't. You can't revenge yourself. I mean, the Sermon on the Mount is where you learn what unrighteous thoughts are because as you're reading these things, you want to say, that's impossible. Nobody can live that way. And you start to rationalize. Well, Jesus didn't really mean it. He didn't really mean give to the poor. He meant teach them fiscal responsibility while they're hungry and starving to death, and you become, you know, uh, you have all sorts of ways of just not doing it. You know, the man who comes to you and asks you for your coat, and you give him your cloak also. If someone wants you to go a mile, you go with him too. You have to, so you rationalize all the reasons why if someone strikes you on one cheek, you have to punch him back, not turn the other cheek. Just, to, you know, it's, that's the way the real world works. Well... We're not called to be like the people of the world. 
Yeah, so if you want to understand unrighteous thoughts, well, they occur to you when God's word rubs you the wrong way. So you know what they are. So turn from them. <laughs> Wicked ways. There's the things that go with the unrighteous thoughts. God's thoughts and his ways, oh, they're so much higher than ours. And yet he reveals, these are the things, as Moses said, that are revealed and they belong to us and to our children that we may do them. The word of God that you must hear has to do certain things for you to actually have heard it. Yes, it gives you comfort, it gives you hope, you, you believe in God's good promises and everything in Jesus Christ. It also calls you to turn away from your own thoughts that are unrighteous and your own ways that are wicked. You say, my ways aren't wicked. I don't go out and get drunk and rob banks and have adulterous affairs. And Yeah, okay, well, the Sermon on the Mount speaks to that too. <laughs> you know, if it's in your heart, let me ask you this. Do you rationalize reasons not to respond when your poor brother has need? Are you holding on to resentment and refusing to forgive? Your ways and your thoughts, if they're your own, instead of those which God has taught and revealed and sent down from heaven, like the rain and the snow, I have news for you. Those thoughts are unrighteous. Those ways are wicked. Replace them with the ones God has provided for you that have come down like the rain and the snow from heaven. That, that's the way to read the Bible. You don't read it for strange, hidden things, the secret codes, figuring out who will be the Antichrist. No, you read it <laughs> to have comfort and hope because of the message of the gospel. And you read it so you can replace your own unrighteous ways and wicked, uh, your unrighteous thoughts, unrighteous, let me unrighteous thoughts and wicked ways with God's good ways and thoughts that he has revealed. You see, it's again, it gets back to being a disciple of Jesus, who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed as his most justly do. All might, majesty, dominion, power, and glory, henceforth world without end.